The sign says historic Perth Amboy, and here they mean it. Perth Amboy has always been on the city of Perth. From voting to flying. They've just forgotten about, completely forgotten about. And there are treasures here, some still to be discovered. You can find anything in here, this is incredible. We discover Perth Amboy. We can make this Williamsburg. New Jersey's city of first. Thanks for being with us on this Discover New Jersey special. I'm Kurt Sieglin. You know, it's very easy to immerse yourself in the history of Perth Amboy. Just walking around town, there's so much of it. So where do you begin? Well, you begin where it all started, with the Earl of Perth. This is James Drummond of Scotland. And although he never set foot here, the town is named for him. He sponsored the expedition that established a settlement here. A marker at nearby Caledonia Park honors those first settlers when they arrived in 1685. That was nearly 330 years ago. And that makes this bustling city of now 50,000 one of the oldest in the country. And like all of the world's oldest cities, Perth Amboy sits on the water. That's not a coincidence. Throughout its history, Perth Amboy has been a bustling port. This is where the Arthur Kill and the Raritan River meet to form the Raritan Bay, the Atlantic Ocean just beyond. And on the riverfront today, there's the Ferry Slip Museum. Ferry service across the way to Tottenville, Staten Island dates to 1709. The ferry was a very, very important link. Um, it created a source of food, recreation, transportation, industry, etc. came about because we had this ideal location. The structure you see on the river today is how the ferry terminal looked in the early 1900s. It is the oldest ferry slip in the country and the last remaining wooden one. But it closed for good in the 1960s. The Outer Bridge Crossing was built and people could just immediately go across the bridge. They didn't have to pay per person. So it was much cheaper, much quicker, more efficient, and um, the, the charm of the ferry slip wasn't enough to keep it open. Today, the museum celebrates Perth Amboy's maritime past. And, you know, the earliest renderings of Perth Amboy do depict it as a fishing town. The Lenape Indians showed the town's first settlers how to catch oysters. And keep in mind, this was 100 years before New Jersey became a state and America became a country. Back then, it was English rule. There was an East and West Jersey, and they were governed separately by proprietors. Perth Amboy was the seat of power for the East Jersey proprietors. Proprietary House was the residence of the Royal Governor of New Jersey, that governor appointed by the King of England. One of those governors was none other than the son of Ben Franklin. America's forefathers touched these walls and walked these halls. Of all the colonial governor's mansions, this is the only one still in existence. But it was always built to be the seat of government, as the White House is. The building dates to 1762, which in most towns would make it the oldest around, but not here. The oldest building in Perth Amboy is actually almost 50 years older than that. This is City Hall, built in 1714. It is the oldest still in use government building in America. But all of this is not why we call Perth Amboy the city of first. That heritage actually refers back to something that is secreted away in Trenton. We take you to the state archives and there in a basement vault is New Jersey's copy of the Bill of Rights. It's hardly ever seen in public. When America was breaking away from England, each of the 13 colonies was given a copy of the Bill of Rights to ratify. This is New Jersey's real copy, and Perth Amboy was the first town to agree to it. And there would be more firsts to come, including first flight. This is really forgotten history, but the Wright brothers in North Carolina, they were not the first to fly. The world's first directional flight happened here in New Jersey, and no one knows. Also discovering treasures that no one in town knew anything about until the mayor went exploring. We're discovering Perth Amboy, a city of firsts on News 12 New Jersey.
We are discovering Perth Amboy, stepping inside the Surveyor General's building. This was built in 1852, positively modern by Perth Amboy standards. This is where all the town's records and maps were originally kept. The building is empty right now. By the end of the year, they are hoping to turn it into a museum. Thanks for joining us once again on this Discover New Jersey special as we explore this city of firsts. Perth Amboy is forever in the history books for what happened right here on March the 31st, 1870. That is the day that Thomas Mundy Peterson voted. He became the first African American to ever vote. Now, he was born in Metuchen, but he worked in the school system here in Perth Amboy. Following passage of the 15th Amendment, African Americans were given the right to vote, and he was first. And again, it happened right where we're standing, on the very same spot where just years before, slaves right off the boat from Africa were sold. The city of Perth Amboy later gave Peterson a medallion to commemorate his role in history. He is buried here in town at the St. Peter's Cemetery. There is living history here too. The city's first ever female mayor is currently in office, Wilda Diaz. She showed us an interesting newspaper article from the 1920s after women were allowed to vote. The headline, will the city have a lady mayor? Well, in 2008, it finally happened. When you take a look at those articles, it describes what a future mayor would be, and it really actually um, describes me to the T. As a mother and as, as a woman, I, I bring a total different insight to government. Here at City Hall, they have pictures of all the town's past mayors, man after man, and at the end of the line, Mayor Diaz. Perth Amboy has always been uh, the city of first. It seems like a dream, you know, and that I am part of the history of such a wonderful community, such a historic city. She is very much a student of history, and it's largely because of her. Some interesting discoveries were recently made at the Perth Amboy Library. The library is being remodeled right now. The mayor happened to be in the basement walking around when she made a very significant discovery, proof that in the search for history, the key is not often in looking, but in looking in the right place. When we walked in, um, it was right here. Sitting up against the wall in the library basement boiler room. One of a kind murals. I had no idea of their history. No one did. One of the originals is still on a library wall, and that was a clue, but it took a newspaper article from the 70s to fill in all the blanks. And what they found out, these murals are from the 1930s. part of President Franklin Roosevelt's Work Projects Administration after the Great Depression. Two artists created 23 plaster bas-reliefs. They all have childhood themes as they once adorned the children's library. But in 1974, there was a fire. The murals were saved, but put in the basement. And there they sat for nearly four decades, forgotten. Just to know that they were laid against the wall, um, it was disheartening. You know, this, these are masterpieces that all the residents of the city should have an opportunity to, to see them. And thanks to the mayor's preservation insistence, they will be. But first, they've got to be cleaned up. It's like an old baseball glove. You, you, you wouldn't fit, refinish that and bring it up to looking like new, but would you do that with these? Clean them and protect them with an eye to displaying them once the library reopens in September. That means their history is also their future as all of Perth Amboy will get to enjoy these murals as residents did 70 plus years ago. To know that it is preserved and that we're going to have future generations will also have an opportunity to see that what we found and what we are going to um, showcase. The discovery of the bas reliefs actually led to an even more interesting discovery. You see, the mayor asked a very important question. After finding the artwork, she asked, is there any other room I need to see? And she was pointed down the hall. I think out of sight, out of mind. It's really the only way to describe this. Under peeling paint, a forgotten room in the Perth Amboy Library basement. Lantern slides. 1894. Stereo views. 1898. Sheet music. 1872. These are all originals. It's overwhelming. It's just astounding, and I, I, I don't really know of a lot of other discoveries that are like this. Fayette Street sidewalks looking west. It's an eclectic mix of everything collected by and donated to the library 
going back well over a century. Throughout the years, they just continue to stack and, you know, and bring things in and, and just store them. However, no one knew about it. So it's in here. And it's the mayor who went in here. We're on a mission. And realized just how special it all is. I'm very thankful to all those previous librarians because, you know, they save city history. It's right here. There's certainly Perth Amboy history here, but potentially American world history. You don't know what you're going to find in this room. Including these stereo views. One way to describe these photos of the world, Google Maps of the 1800s. There's two images, they're slightly offset, and you would put them into a contraption like this. And then when you look through, the, you see them uh, in three dimensions. This is early 3D movies, basically. And we had to be very careful unwrapping what was labeled as a map of England. It turned out to be a map that once hung at either a school or the library itself. This map was even more fragile, literally falling apart. This was made from a tracing of a map of Perth Amboy that dates to 1743. You have to be so careful handling this material. Just breathing on them is an act of destruction, it feels like. You don't want to do more damage than has already been done by time. And that's the tricky part, trying to figure out what you have and keeping it intact at the same time. Yeah, look at this. Such an odd mix. River Road front of great, a great pyramid. And so much of it. This is incredible. It'll take months to go through. You need somebody who is versed in the history who's going to know the value of these things. History experts with Garden State Legacy are helping to assess all that there is and what should be done next. You have to make value judgments as to what is really valuable and what has historic significance and so forth. And a lot of times that's a judgment call. I want to make sure that we know what we have. I think what's so great about this is that it was in a basement of a library, the history of the city. Down the line, the mayor wants to display some of the treasured items that were found at the library, but right now they're just discovering exactly what they have. There are sections of that room that have not been explored in decades. You may have seen the Emmy in that room. What is that doing there? Well, Perth Amboy once produced an Emmy winner. Ruth White was born in town. She went on to become a renowned actress. In the 1960s, she was on a TV show called Little Moon of Albin. She won a Best Supporting Actress Emmy. She died in 1969. The family later gave her Emmy to the library. Ruth is buried at St. Mary's Cemetery here in Perth Amboy. City of First continues after this. Back to Perth Amboy, City of First, a Discover New Jersey special. An amazing story here in town is a story that's really not known outside of town. It's the story of Solomon Andrews and why he doesn't get the credit he deserves, the credit for first flight. Of course, the Wright brothers, 1903, Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. History says they were the first to fly. What if we told you history is wrong? And we're going to proclaim the city of Perth Amboy as being the first in directional flight. John Dyke will tell anyone who will listen, history got it wrong. This whole Wright Brothers thing, them being first, Solomon Andrews was really first, 40 years earlier. Solomon Andrews did it in 1863, right here in New Jersey, and he did it before the Wright Brothers were ever even born. He did it in a hydrogen-filled dirigible named the Arian. Three 80-foot-long balloons tied together with a gondola suspended underneath. Andrews came up with the idea during the Civil War as a way to scout Confederacy positions. It was an idea so ahead of its time, no one thought it possible, even when he proved it was. Why have flight? We have trains. We have steamboats. We can get around. Why do we need flight? The government just like the people of the day, didn't believe that directional flight was possible. June 1st, 1863, 
1863, Andrews lifted off from his Inventors Institute in Perth Amboy. Most of people expected a complete and utter disaster, uh, but instead it became a success. He took off from Perth Amboy, he traveled south over the Arthur Kill, swung out over the Raritan Bay, and then came back to the Inventors Institute and landed. A 15-minute flight proving not only that man could fly, but control one's direction as well. He used strings to steer, essentially sailing the wind currents. People cheered him and they cheered him uh, from the ground and the oyster men in the bay stood up in their boats and cheered him and he came back and landed right where he started. Over the next few years, he made several more flights. His Ariane 2 balloon flew over New York City. In 1866, the paper Harper's Weekly took note detailing Andrew's philosophy of the clouds. Despite it all being documented, 40 years later though, the Wright brothers stayed aloft for 12 seconds and got credit for first flight. But the fact is, it really happened right here. And he just forgotten about, completely forgotten about. New Jersey has never been great in promoting its own history. North Carolina license plates, it says first in flight. And that's absolutely wrong. New Jersey is first in flight. Now, if you want to split hairs, the Wright brothers used a propeller. It was machine-aided flight. But if you're talking just general terms, the first to fly, that was Solomon Andrews in this city of first, Perth Amboy. Andrews was a man way ahead of his time. 24 inventions over his lifetime, including the padlock. As the inscription says, it was first made right here in Perth Amboy. Everything he designed actually worked. And that sets him apart from inventors of that day and time. A lot of inventors had designs that didn't work. He would make things and everything actually worked, including the Arion. The padlock made Andrews wealthy, but it's a fortune he lost in part because he invested so much in his steerable balloon. He tried and tried to get the US government to buy into it, to see the future, to see the potential of flight. But he was alone in that thinking. The idea was so advanced, so radical, no one ever thought flying would take off. As we continue on this city of firsts, what's inside this box? It's Perth Amboy's most treasured item. We'll take a look next. I'm Kurt Sieglin. Welcome back to City of First as we celebrate the great history in the town of Perth Amboy. And we've got to show you this. We're at the park right outside City Hall. This is a replica of the Liberty Bell. Keep in mind, there are only 53 of these in existence. France donated these to the United States back in 1950. They're spread out all over the country. New Jersey's replica of the Liberty Bell is right here in Perth Amboy. You know, the English came here in the 1600s with the vision of turning Perth Amboy into one of the world's great ports, maybe even to rival London one day. They called Perth Amboy Partis Opimus, meaning great port. And they put those words on the silver seal of the city. And this is it. It is rarely seen in public. The original seal, and you can see depicted on it, a ship and a hunting horn cast in pure silver in 1718. And we thank the mayor for showing it to us. That's 300 years old. 300 years old, and I, and I say how um, fortunate we are as a city that we still have um, our history. This is a treasure that we want to leave for future generations. This is the oldest city seal in America. And over the last 300 years, it's been lost twice. In the 1970s, it was returned with a letter. The city now takes no chances as they keep it locked up in a bank vault, bringing it out on only special occasions. We want everyone to see that Perth Amboy um, um, values uh, our history and our treasures, and this is one of them. There's no question about that. We decided to shine the spotlight on Perth Amboy because of the rich history here, and in a state like New Jersey with history everywhere, Perth Amboy really does stand out. 
Solomon Andrews proprietary house, those discoveries at the library. A lot of it, though, is lost history. It's been forgotten. But there is a sentiment here in town that that should change. We're going to give the last word to Thomas Ward, the longtime historian and artist here in town. He really believes Perth Amboy could become a major tourist destination because of its history, a destination to rival Williamsburg, Virginia. Listen to this. The town is a real gem. And if you're even a little bit interested in, in local histories, and you know, you're talking New Jersey history, United States history, it's all happened right here. New Jersey does not take care of its historic sites, not to the extent that they should, because these things draw visitors, they draw people from other areas of the country. They should be show places. We can make this Williamsburg. You know, and that's not an exaggeration. Those dreams are shared, not at a state level, but the people here in Perth Amboy certainly know what they've got. They see the potential. The history is here. It's just not widely celebrated yet. Our hope is more appreciated because of this program. We thank you for watching this Discover New Jersey special, City of Purse. In Perth Amboy, I'm Kurt Seaton. Rarely seen in public, the original seal, and you can see depicted on it a ship and a hunting horn cast in pure silver in 1718. And we thank the mayor for showing it to us. That's 300 years old. 300 years old, and I, and I say how um, fortunate we are as a city that we still have um, our history. This is a treasure that we want to leave for future generations. This is the oldest city seal in America. And over the last 300 years, it's been lost twice. In the 1970s, it was returned with a letter. The city now takes no chances as they keep it locked up in a bank vault, bringing it out on only special occasions. We want everyone to see that Perth Amboy um, um, values uh, our history and our treasures, and this is one of them. There's no question about that. We decided to shine the spotlight on Perth Amboy because of the rich history here. And in a state like New Jersey with history everywhere, Perth Amboy really does stand out. Solomon Andrews, proprietary house, those discoveries at the library. A lot of it, though, is lost history. It's been forgotten. But there is a sentiment here in town that that should change. We're going to give the last word to Thomas Ward, the longtime historian and artist here in town. He really believes Perth Amboy could become a major tourist destination because of its history, a destination to rival Williamsburg, Virginia. Listen to this. The town is a real gem. And if you're even a little bit interested in, in local histories, and you know, you're talking New Jersey history, United States history, it's all happened right here. New Jersey does not take care of its historic sites, not to the extent that they should, because these things draw visitors, they draw people from other areas of the country. They should be show places. We can make this Williamsburg. You know, and that's not an exaggeration. Those dreams are shared, not at a state level, but the people here in Perth Amboy certainly know what they've got. They see the potential. The history is here. It's just not widely celebrated yet. Our hope is more appreciated because of this program. We thank you for watching this Discover New Jersey special city of Perth. In Perth Amboy, I'm Kurt Seaton.